Welcome to another episode in the Hero Origin Story. For those who don't know me yet, I am Carl of the Unboxing Bros, but it's no longer bro since I'm only one now, where we unbox superhero and also villain statues. Just some housekeeping here, if you like the content of our channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and maybe the bell as well so you don't miss out on future comics or statue related content. Today we are gonna talk about one of the founding members of the X-Men. Beast. Who was he before he became the blue skin hairy professor we all know and love? Let's find out. Beast, or also known as Hank McCoy, first appeared in the Uncanny X-Men issue number one, released in September 1963. He was created by then writer Stan Lee and comic artist Jack Kirby. Beast is also a beloved character in statue collecting, as Beast is one of those characters that is quite easy to make look really good in statue form. And one of the most expensive statues around is actually a custom statue of Beast, and it costs more or less 10,000 US dollars. Beast or Hank was born in Illinois. His parents were Norton and Edna McCoy, a worker at a local nuclear power plant. Norton was once exposed to intense nuclear radiation, which appears to have caused Hank's mutation. As Hank grew up, he showed a somewhat genius level intellect. However, he had unusually long arms and legs. These were apparently his mutant powers manifesting before puberty. Because of this noticeably unusual body proportion, he often got taunted at school with the nicknames Magilla, Gorilla, Joe Banana, and Monkey Boy. Because, yes, you guessed it right, his limbs are comparable to those of a gorilla. Speaking of gorilla, check out this custom statue of Beast that actually really looks like a gorilla. The good thing is this is only a switch out. And if this gorilla look is not your thing, there's a portrait switch out with a better looking Beast portrait, kinda similar to Jim Lee. Despite Hank McCoy's feral appearance, he is brilliant and highly educated in arts and science. He even understood Egyptian hieroglyphics. He is also an authority on biochemistry and genetics, the X-Men's medical doctor, and the science and math instructor at Xavier Institute. Okay, they can't just dust off one of the famous X-Men. How about that pots with the giant pigeon wings? What do those do anyway? Huh? Carrying three feet off the ground to snatch up the nearest muffin crumb? Personality-wise, Hank is a friendly, warm-hearted man when he isn't affected by the beast's anger. Hank? Although he does like to have fun, especially with snowball fights, he also has a great sense of humor and uses intellectual references to disrupt his enemies. The noblest answer unto such is kindly silence when they brawl. Alfred Lord Tennyson. Hank also campaigns against society's bigotry and discrimination against mutants. This is why I must stand trial. They must see that we are not a threat to mankind, but are a part of it. While fighting his own animal instincts and fears of social rejection, Beast is dedicated to make this world a better place for humans and mutants. Paraphrase the bard, I am a mutant. Hath not a mutant's senses, affections, fed with the same food, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a human is? If you prick us, do we not bleed? Now let's talk about Beast's power. It's possible that Beast's mutation is a result of genetic atavism. In biology, atavism is when an animal's biological structure changes. It might be possible that Hank's ancestral genetic trait that resembles a beast reappeared after having been lost through evolutionary changes. Hank also has Newtenus characteristic. In biology, Newtenus is the retention of juvenile features, especially apparent in domesticated animals. This may explain his genius level intellect despite his animal appearance. He also possesses superhuman strength, speed, and agility. He is an excellent hand-to-hand -hand fighter, using a unique style of acrobatic moves from combat training with Professor Xavier and coaching from Captain America. In the movies, we can see Hank unlocking his full potential when he uses all his legs or arms and legs to move. He moves extremely fast with all four of them. <laughs> He was even able to snuck up on Magneto and do the finishing blow. Never learn, do you? Actually, I do. So who are his allies? 
Beast is well known for being associated with the X-Men, the Avengers, and the Defenders, and the Illuminati. No, not that Illuminati. Not even close. His enemies, meanwhile, includes Apocalypse, Avalanche, Count Nafria, Juggernaut, Magneto, and Mastermind. Any villain of the X-Men who cut it short. And speaking of enemies, there are a lot of X-Men villains available in statues. Though they are mostly Magneto or the good-looking ones. His greatest challenge was when he descended into darkness with the legacy virus. Frustrated for being kept away from working on the deadly contagion by Charles Xavier and Moira, he felt discouraged when he was not able to find a cure. In Beast's struggle, you can also easily see one of his greatest weaknesses, arrogance. Believing that he can solve any problem with time and effort, Beast's pursuit of a cure become an unhealthy obsession. Beast has this tendency to become arrogant since he is used to depending on his intellect to figure things out. This very arrogance also almost cost him his humanity. When Beast thought he had created a cure for his mutation, he used the serum that wasn't actually ready for human trials. Which gave Beast his familiar furry appearance. However, the mutation appears to be progressive, meaning his appearance continually changes. Professor. He feared that it might have ultimately cost him his humanity, transforming Beast into a true beast. And that was another episode of Hero Origins. What do you think is Beast's greatest power? Comment your answer down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And see you all next week. Like and subscribe. This is Carl and see you in the next one.